Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Andrew Cartwright. Welcome to the show where we talk about stimulus checks, for stimulus checks, what you need to know about the economy, stocks, what's happening. I'm going to cover some questions a lot of you have been asking about what I think of the economy, also what Jerome Powell has just said in a meeting earlier today. Also, Apple has marked an event that they're doing March 8th that's coming and what some Russians are doing with American products now that we Apple has stopped selling to Russia. What wheat prices look like and oil. So what's inflation going to be like um, as we're heading out of the pandemic? We're probably wondering or you're wondering what I'm wondering. Should the economy start improving soon? Is it going to go up more, even more? Well, yes and no. We're going to cover that. We have some who are really worried about inflation and others who are and many are worried about a nosedive right into a recession. As you know, I'm an advocate of development, real estate, business. So this is something that is super important is what the guy that has the printing press, what he's going to do and what could happen as the world is in chaos right now. So let's see what Jerome Powell had to say um, about all of that. And we'll decide if he has a point or not. So we're going to cover that. I hope you guys are doing fantastic. Here's your stock market, your money market update for Tuesday, March 2nd, 2022. My goal, if you don't know, I've always had a goal of creating a million millionaires, either whether that's through education like this or whether it's through real estate, direct investments like me making investments into people's companies or providing the loans, which over the last couple of years provided 67,000 different loans for people through the SBA program. So in the link, I cover the, uh, I do SBA loans. So my goal is to give you the best information to access money, both from the government and from the private sector for yourself, loved ones. So stay tuned to the channel. It's my personal mission to help as many people as possible with all the experience, tell you about all the mistakes that I've made so that you don't have to make those. I think sharing success, well, it, that, yeah, okay. But s sharing what's gone wrong, I think that's even more important. I'm giving away $2,000. All you got to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and throw a comment. We're going to pick a random comment. When we hit 2,000 subscriber, 200,000 subscribers, I'm going to launch out $2,000 to a lucky winner. So I hope that's you. I want it to be you. So make sure you do that. Finally, thanks to my patrons who support the channel for as little as three bucks. They get articles, special, copy of my book, all kinds of special pricing on programs. Also, if you want to financially change your life with real estate, if real estate's your bag, I got an unbelievable course. I spent $40,000 on my education as well as $45 million in mistakes. And I don't want you to make those mistakes. $99 investment. It's a $900 program. Uh, we're going to be raising the price soon, so make sure you grab a hold of that. Also in the description are loans, my second channel, as well as crypto and currency, all kinds of stuff. Free stuff, free, free stocks, free crypto. So first, let's get into this. We've already seen signs of a recession, like shipping containers from China being left completely empty on the ports at the U in the U.S. here, in many ports across the country. There's been there are in enough goods to fill them, not enough to fill them right now as the pandemic has shortened everybody's staff around the entire world. This was a global pandemic. It's also really expensive to ship them back when they're empty. So they got to fill them with something in order to ship them back. This is also creating a shortage in the containers, which is also not great. Of course, they could also lower demand. Oh, wait. That would lead to a recession, right? If we have less demand, prices would come down, less things are sold, the economy goes down. Anyway, what is a recession? You might be asking yourself, right? That's what happens when a sort of, there's a mismatch between the supply side of things, what things are made and how much supply there are, and the demand for that products. The higher the inflation is, the higher the prices are, which also means that the less the demand is, so there's less demand. Sometimes it's artificial, created, like uh, closing down 
oil wells, so they raise prices of oil artificially because there's plenty of oil on the planet. Typically, the feds lower prices and print out more money to stimulate the market, meaning they drop the rates very low, which they've been very low. And now Jerome is talking about in the next couple of weeks raising it by a quarter percent. That could change prices, could slow. His hope is to slow down the real estate market and slow down and tape, taper inflation. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. They could also increase rates even more, which will stop the prices from rising higher and higher as money is harder to get, it's more expensive. However, this means less money will be flowing into the market, which means companies will have to cut spending, leading to higher unemployment, which is what the Fed is directly supposed to avoid, is high unemployment. This is a result in less demand with lower inflation, but will undoubtedly lead to another recession, of course, right? There's the issue of what's happening in Ukraine that we got to talk about, the, the elephant in the room all over the news. It's certainly led to a lot of uncertainty in the global economy as we're reeling from the pandemic where people have been misplaced uh, work-wise, out of work, even though we have low unemployment, a lot of people are still struggling. But uh, Powell, having said this, Powell more or less told lawmakers that the central bank, lawmakers being our Senate and our politicians, our leaders, that the central bank is going to lift interest rates from near zero uh, on, at this month where we're at. Um, the goal, obviously, is to tackle inflation because we're all having problems. Oil prices, $110 today. Wheat's going through the roof because Russia is one of the biggest producers of wheat. And if we're going to have sanctions against them, we're going to pay more for wheat. Also, if Apple, which they said they are not selling to Russians, um, is now going to be dealing with the fact that they're going to lose that market share. And will it come back? Will they be pissed off when Apple goes to sell there again, if they ever do? The good news, though, is Powell said actually he's actually working to ease some nerves in the middle of the Russian uh, invasion into Ukraine which of course sent the market into a tailspin recently. Today, after his talk, the market surged. It all went up across the board, which was amazing. I watched my portfolio go up. Powell said he's actually supporting a 25% basis rate hike for the month versus the massive 50 points, 50 basis points, that not 50 points, but 50 basis points, which is like a half a percent rate hike through, though it will uh, to push for that. So he's doing half of what he said it would do. Right now, traders are seeing a 5% probability of a 50 basis point rate hike and a 95% probability, which I think is going to happen. We're going to have a quarter basis point hike because I don't think that they feel they can raise a rate by a whole half a percent because that would slow the economy down so much because it is, I believe it's fragile. Do you guys think the market is fragile right now? Because I certainly think so. Powell said, and quote, I quote this, we expect it will be appropriate to raise the target range for the federal funds rate at our meeting late this month, end quote. He continued, quote, near-term effects on the U.S. economy of the invasion in Ukraine to an ongoing war and sanctions and events to come uh, remain highly uncertain, which we're all uncertain about what's going to happen. What happens when you sanction and you, you block all these assets and the, the whole world has been, has gotten into this war virtually um, through social media, through sanctions, through all kinds of stuff, through protests. It's been unbelievable to see the world come together like this. So we are very, these are uncertain times, right? He went on to say, we will need to be nimble, responsive to incoming data and the evolving outlook, end quote. On a positive note, Powell show, uh, shows a positive aspect of today's economy. Growth has been strong and jobs are beyond expectations. They are very, they're, according to what their directive is, which is to make sure that unemployment stays low and the dollar is strong, he's, they're doing well. In any case, Powell believes that inflation will die down this year and that we have nothing to be worried about. Gas prices and groceries won't be a concern too much longer. I know right now many of you are going, well, when I go to the store, 
it doesn't show that or when you're paying five dollars for gas it, it's taking your ability to buy other stuff which is also going to hurt other areas of the market as well he said and I, I have another quote for you admitting that inflation uh, proclaiming uh, proclaiming that inflation is far too high and that we are committed to using our tools to get it back down it's really about very very high demand which we're seeing like in real estate and other areas but we've also been shut down for a couple of years and a lot of people have not been working as much as they were so we have a lot of supply chain problems it's a very different kind of inflationary story though we've we've had in the past but it's one we haven't dealt with before this is brand new territory and we're gonna have to deal with it is what he's saying as always I'd love to hear your thoughts about this and are you worried about inflation and the potential of recession I think that a recession well it's hard to say because there's been a break in the supply chain for two years so while that's coming online and then we got the second the sixth wave of the Omicron virus it kind of nose dived the production so but we replaced a lot of the money that usually comes for production we just printed it gave out PPP loans EIDL uh, unemployment so there's a lot of money floating out there in savings accounts that still can be out there so a recession is really up in the air what do you guys think about the potential of a recession we are supposed to be one in one and a recession is just two down quarters that only means that we do less than the quarter before twice that's a recession so is this going to be just a paper recession or a real ins recession where you feel it and the other thing I don't think that inflation will stay this high I think eventually the market will balance itself out the only outlier that seems really interesting to me is that this war creates a lot of international problems and if it unites us together we could end up pulling oil from this country which would be a revenue a generator for the United States there's a lot that could happen good and bad from this war and from the sanctions um, on all sides uh, at the end of the day a cooperating world is the most profitable world but you know so is competition and if your competitors decide to go to war and uh, all of a sudden they're off the field and out of the game like we're seeing in soccer well uh, you know that means that you'll make more money because you don't have a competitor on the field competing with your business. So we'll see. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'm Andrew Cartwright. Take care. Be safe. So yeah. does that give us like a cultural abandonment issue? Oh, for like sure. If you, if you had 9 million dads come in <laughs> and then yeah. you had 9 million dads leave. I'd have daddy wouldn't, issues. Wouldn't you have daddy issues? <laughs> yeah, I'm I not saying you do. I was buying a racetrack for $28 million in Wait, Utah. Wait, was it the Larry H. Miller? Yeah. That literally is five minutes from my house. I've done everything right and failed. Yeah. Me, yeah. Yeah. I've done everything right and failed. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's just, it, it you really know, is. it's a, so. I do need your autograph here. Will you sign so, one of these for me? I, we'll get, we'll get to that. <laughs> That's probably what got you back up on your feet. Okay.